Hey, welcome back to Steve Horvath Fishing. Once upon a time, very, very long time ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth, I was young. And me and my friends, we would go fishing after school. We were 14, 15, didn't drive yet. Parents were working, so if they had a boat, they weren't letting us take the truck in a boat. So what do we do? We go fish ponds, creeks, little lakes, big lakes, but fish off the bank too. A lot of times the water we had access to was really, really shallow water. Shallow water that you probably wouldn't think about going in a bass boat unless you're Keith Poche or John Cox and you know, you'd go four wheel driving through it. But we used a worm rig. Now I know what you're saying. Dude, you throw out a worm rig and you're going to come back with all kinds of snot and stuff. And yeah, there was algae. It was what we would call moss, big globs of stuff. There was some pads and stuff like that. Yeah, we caught fish on soft plastics. A lot, most of our fish on soft plastics until it got dark. And then we'd be throwing like a hula popper or, or jitterbug. I mean, we're going back that far. But the technique still works basically two types of soft plastics that you would use for this and it's the weightless Texas rig now I know what you're saying no no dude dude floating worm floating worm kinked up ba boom throw it out jerk 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 no not a floating worm okay not a floating worm it's not the technique we're talking about we would use one of two different worms Back then, curly tail worms were all the rage on the market. Right now we have a seven inch power worm. Blue fleck, great color. That would be one of the types of worms we used. The other one was a predecessor to the swimming worms. And that was a worm called the dingling. The dingling worm, Billy Westmoreland famous smallmouth guy. He was famous in getting notoriety to that worm. But the dingling worm had a tail on it that looked like the tail of a beaver. Everybody called them beaver tail worms. Now, if you tinkered around with them, you could take a pair of scissors and slice into that beaver tail worm, and you basically have what is now the zoom swim worm, which is pretty cool. We were ahead of our time. We had no idea. Okay? Almost turned that worm into a buzz bait. So, We've got this, and modern day we've got the Zoom Swimming Worm, and we've also got something like the Rage Tail Cutter Worm. Technique was simple. I'm going to take it, Texas rig it, no weight whatsoever. And this is where. This technique really shines with a straight shank hook because a straight shank hook will tend to come through cover a lot nicer than a kink shank worm hook like EWG. You've got this little angle here that can catch stuff. With the straight shank, not nearly as much. But we did it two different ways we fished. We would throw this out and basically dead stick it till we knew it was on the bottom. Sometimes even longer. Then we just take and give it a twitch. Maybe a second twitch. Wait a couple seconds. Twitch. Second twitch. You're only in two feet of water or a foot and a half of water. You don't have to worry about it coming too far off the bottom. If there's a bass around, he eats it pretty quick. Now the other one, the swimming worm. Just throw it out and reel it straight. <laughs> Problem is with this, generally you set the hook before the fish had the worm. So when you do the swimming worm deal, you gotta actually feel them on there, let the rod, rod load up and set the hook. I'm, I can't even talk about it because I'm so, I just, I remember those days so much. So, 
Get the floating worm or floating worm. Now you got me saying it. The weightless worm, a shot. Hey, I'm Steve. 